Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and I killed this keyboard, I'm sorry. This is a Tesoro Colada keyboard that I was using to research keyboard backplates. One of our writers, Michael Kearns, recently posted an article linked here about keyboard backplates, specifically looking at metal versus plastic versus PCB backplates, and again, specifically at the mechanical keyboard market. So that's sort of what I'm talking about today, just briefly recapping his article for those who did not see it. And I'm sorry, I just have to do this. Okay, I really had to get that out of my system. So this is a mechanical keyboard and this uses a metal backplate, as many of them do, including Corsair's K70 and Thermaltake's Poseidon Z, both of which we've looked at fairly extensively in the past. And a backplate is very simply what your switches are physically mounted to. So in this assembly right here, we at the very back, there's the bottom of the keyboard, that's the bottom, that's what sits on your desk. The red board here is a printed circuit board, and that contains all of the circuitry, the transistors, the capacitors, uh, all of those things, effectively all the electrical wiring that ends up inputting the key input to your computer. That's what's there. On top of that is a piece of metal, and that piece of metal hosts our switches, which eventually feed through the PCB and talk to the computer. In this instance, we're using a metal backplate, which uh, I'm not sure if this is steel or aluminum, but I bl uh, pieces are coming off, but I believe it is uh, I believe it is a steel backplate. I could be wrong though. Some manufacturers use aluminum, which is a bit lighter and more expensive, and then others use steel, which is heavier, cheaper, and uh, provides really the same feel as aluminum at the end of the day. So here's the deal with backplates. If it's not metal, it's either gonna be plastic which is pretty rare, or PCB, printed circuit board. And in the case of plastic, there are some interesting advantages that Michael Kearns lays out in the article. Primarily, with plastic, you get this disbursement effect of backlights, of LEDs, and that's because uh, the reflectivity of a plastic surface is a bit different than one that is metal, and of course it varies based on how they're painted. And it's very different from one that's, that's a PCB. Although most PCB boards will not be LED backlit. There are a few, but PCB boards tend to be very cheap and even not mechanical in a lot of instances. But plastic's very rare. So then we look at PCB boards and those are physically, the switches are mounted directly to a printed circuit board. And that's gonna be cheaper, it'll flex a lot. You'll see that this, I, I really can't flex it. I'm trying, uh, that's probably a better angle, but it really doesn't have much give. What you're seeing give here is the plastic back the metal is not moving at all, and that's because it's a big piece of metal, and my nerd arms are not strong enough to flex it. Uh, a PCB will flex when I do that, and for a lot of users, that's potentially an undesirable effect, because when you're typing, especially if you're typing a lot, or heavily or loudly, you really don't want the board sort of flexing around under your fingers as you push down. Some users like that. I've definitely seen the forum posts where people prefer the flexing nature of PCB backplates. For metal, we get this resilient, thick piece of metal that really doesn't move when you type, and it provides more of a resounding uh, clack, more of a, a, a very resolute press when you push the key down. And for a lot of users, that resonance is uh, resonating quality because it feels more sturdy or more solid. And that's tr definitely true to the extent that steel is far more solid than plastic. Now, metal will be more expensive and will be a bit heavier if that's even relevant to you. For some people it might be, but for the most part I would imagine not. Uh, it is more expensive though, but you'll still find it in $50 keyboards like the Nixius Moda, which we reviewed and is now $50, or Thermal Takes Poseidon Z, or Corsair's K70, which is not a $50 board, but a very nice, uh, I think about $70 to $100 board, depending on where you're buying and when you're buying. So that is the keyboard backplate differences. Check the article for more information below. Please subscribe if you like this video. It's helped us a lot so far, and I'd love to keep doing these. And I will see you all next time. Peace. Poor keyboard.